Alright, <clears throat> this is uh, going to be my first uh, video review. I just uh, actually stumbled onto a webcam uh, in my computer room, and since I've been wanting to do video reviews for a while now, and I've finally got the means to do so, I guess I'm going to try it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a video review of a chiptune album that was sent to me uh, via email. Um, it's a really awesome thing to be receiving unsolicited um, requests for reviews. It's a weird thing to experience, but I'm really happy about it anyway. Um, this particular artist, his um, name is Mark uh, TDK Knight. Um, his last name is spelled K-N-I-G-H-T, as in a knight in shining armor. And the TDK stands for The Dark Knight, which is pretty damn clever, I have to say. Um, you can't hear it because I've actually got my uh, microphone set up to only pick up my voice, but I'm listening to the album right now. I've listened to it several times, and I'm giving it uh, another little run-through because I really am kind of torn on this album. Uh, first, I want to thank Mark for sending me this album. Uh, it's called Reawakening. That's the actual title. Um, and it's a... It's a, it's a good album. I, you know, I really want Mark to know that I, I like it. I genuinely do. Um, but it's also a chiptune album. And uh, the thing about chiptune is it's not something I recommend to everyone. I think it's um, sort of a product of a nostalgia that only a certain generation has. The kids um, that are a lot younger than us probably hear chiptune and, and just don't really get it, or at least aren't as... Uh, to attach to it emotionally. And people that are older than us uh, definitely don't understand it. Uh, not to say that they don't ever like it, but they probably don't have the same emotional link that uh, the 21 to 30 have you know, growing up with Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis and, you know, the classic 16-bit, uh, 32-bit era. And this album really heavily trades on that era. Uh, it's not really uh, reliant on the elements that we are familiar with from that time, but it really, uh, at the core, it's it, that's that's a big part of the appeal. A lot of the melodies and the, the the tones that are used on this album really do feel retro. Uh, there's nothing. I want to say there's nothing forward thinking about the album, but it definitely. Uh, goes back, you know, it really kind of returns, it has a coda of this old school, uh, almost like adventurous feel. This is, this is definitely not like, um, it doesn't have a rock style or a jazz, it's not really any particular, um, genre of music other than chiptune. Uh, you, you could say there's maybe some trance elements, but for the most part it really feels like this stuff belongs in the you know, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo era. And that's a great thing for me. I mean, I love that. And anybody who, anybody who grew up with Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo, you've really got to hear this album because it feels like it should be, you know, playing the background of a, a, of a new Chrono Trigger or any of those kind of games. That said, though, outside of that feeling of nostalgia that it brings to you, um, the music itself doesn't have a lot of draw. It's, it's, it tends to be a little overlong. Um, there are passages that kind of um, go on for a little while without evolving. Um, there's uh, some weird mixing. You know, some, some of the elements uh, can, can really come forward a lot to the point where it's distracting. I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking it's on purpose. I'm thinking the idea is to um, really kind of uh, hit you with a lot of the more um, interesting pieces of the the music itself. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's not done as uh, smoothly as I would prefer, but I, that's also a technical element that I personally don't know anything about. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. But I still insist that the album could use a little bit of trimming. Um, it could definitely um, probably go in some more experimental directions using uh, a lot more uh, dynamic uh, sounds, but it's 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 definitely a very fun album. Uh, one of the things that really uh, is remarkable about it is it 
it goes a lot of places uh, tonally. You know, it can, it can be kind of upbeat and, uh, you know, chirpy and uh, fun, but it can also be really epic and mysterious and really um, take you to places. And that's pretty difficult to do in a single album. That said, it also results in a, a, a kind of weird mishmash feel to this album. And some of the songs are actually like uh, instrumental, or not instrumental, but 8-bit versions of, of the tracks. Um, you get uh, uh, Albino 2 and Albino 4, which are both, you know, pretty different in terms of the, the structure and the composition, but you can definitely tell that they're kind of um, taking off on each other, and it feels a little bit like... Uh, you know, the album wasn't composed um, as the 10 tracks, sorry, the 12 tracks that are present so much as may have had five tracks composed and then some of the other ones kind of spun off of it. Um, and there are even a couple of songs that I personally just skip right out when I'm listening to the album. Uh, Nicotine Pang starts off pretty neat, but it's seven minutes of chiptune, and that's, I personally think chiptune just doesn't, um, it, it doesn't have uh, the merit of seven minutes unless you're really throwing a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, as a, 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 a group called Starch that that pulls that off by by using the chip tune as a, a base for some very proggy elements. And this has that's the thing that I think I like the most about this is that it has a lot of prog, progressive rock kind of feel to it. Um, it almost kind of sounds like something that uh, you know. Um, Alex Lifeson from Rush would have done if he was in the chip team. It has got that level of compositional, um, compositional dynamics. Uh, it's just really heavily limited by the fact that it's still chip tune. You can only do so much with these sounds. Um, so overall, you know, I would definitely recommend, hugely recommend this to anybody who likes chip tune. Uh, anybody who has uh, feelings for the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis era. Uh, and anybody who's really into kind of like progressive electronica. Outside of that, though, it's kind of difficult to say that you should listen to this. Um, I would still give it a, a just a, a sample, particularly the first track, uh, Delon Mezine, or Delon Mezine, I guess, I guess it's like a switch around of Melon Design, uh, which was, I believe, his demo scene group, <laughs> uh, which is awesome that he was involved in the demo scene when it was uh, just kind of given to its peak. You know, that gives uh, Mark a lot of, of, of root in the origin of chiptune, and from what he's told me, he's composed a lot of, uh, of uh, not important so much as, uh, you know, big name uh, games. You know, and it really shows here, because it's, these, these are, are, are well-crafted songs. But ultimately, they're still limited by the fact that, A, the chiptune and B, they're composed in the style of traditional chiptune songs. Um, so yeah, um, good album, recommended for chiptune fans, not so much for those of you who might not be in that scene. Um, but I really do want to thank Mark for letting me hear it, um, and I will definitely be pairing it with a lot of my favorite chiptune stuff. Um, and so that's all for this review.